Okay, Elisa from my PhD. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to be talking to you about your work and your tips. You're a PhD student from Germany. Introduce yourself a little bit. I didn't want to take away from that and tell us about what you do as a student. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me. As you said, I'm a PhD student um, at the University of Constance here in Germany. I've been trained at the same university in media, literature, and art studies. I'm currently writing my doctoral thesis on forms of self-representation. Self That's hard to say in English. Um, <laughs> in the modern English era, and I mainly concentrate on painting. So you could say I'm, I'm researching a very early modern form of self-marketing before Instagram even existed. And on the side, as you hinted, I, I'm also a creator on Instagram. I have an account where I share methods and tips on how to be more productive and work efficiently as a student. That's so interesting. How did you end up getting into that field? Was it just something that naturally occurred, like an interest? That's a very good question. I think it started <laughs> with an interest. And then um, you kind of learn where to see things that have not been researched so far, where's the most potential for you to contribute something to the field of research that you're in. And it took me actually, I think about one and a half year to figure the exact a concentration field out that I that I want to work with. Now I I feel very comfortable with it. Yep. And how long have you been working on your thesis now? I started in 2018, and I have to end in this year in October. So it's been a little the final stretch. Years. Yeah, final stretch. That's exciting. So I, I, I assume going into your doctorate, you enjoy being a student. I do very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you giving you giving productivity advice to students who might not be in their PhD level yet, but um, in general, you are definitely an authority in the department. I have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. For a long time, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you obviously spend a lot of your day working on your thesis, but what does a typical work week look like for you? Do you have another job? Are you managing schoolwork uh, with a career? Well, you know, I'm very fortunate. I have a PhD position at my university, which means that I'm also funded by my university. For a lot of PhD students, that's not the case. They have to have a job on the side to, you know, to earn money. But um, for me, it's a little bit more easy. And so my day is a little bit less exciting, I'm afraid. I spend most of my time writing on my manuscript, reading, especially these days. Uh, so I sit in front of the computer most of the time. I also have administrational and teaching work to do um, while I reduce this mm. a little bit now in the final stretch in order to really get the thesis done. Um, and since I'm sitting a lot, I really devote a large amount of my time to working out in order to you know, stay, stay healthy and keep the balance, especially on the weekends when I can, I go for a run or a long walk. So to, to really not sit all the time and have- To stretch those muscles. Back. Yeah, yeah, you really feel it. I'm sure <laughs> sitting in front of your computer all day, you're working on your thesis, obviously you have to be super disciplined with your time mm -hmm. and with creating a balance in your life with mm -hmm. work and exercise and other healthy habits. What do you think the biggest challenges, obviously for you as a PhD student, but for students in general, what do you think the biggest challenges are for them and their time management and their productivity? That's a tough question. I think the biggest difficulty would be to organize yourself because coming out of school, especially these days when you're very young, coming out of school and you're told what to do all the time with a strict schedule and suddenly you have to do it by yourself and you've never learned how to do it, that can be very tough. Um, but gladly these days there are with YouTube, Instagram, social media, there are so many resources where you can get tips and um, experiences from all the students from uh, that is... Uh, not that hard, but somebody has to tell you that you have to really organize yourself. Otherwise, you will not know what your, your mistake is in that moment. That's very true. Yeah, going from that sort of strict schedule to mm -hmm. self-managing is really hard for a lot of people. And in general, managing your time when you have, you know, a position where you have lots of different responsibilities, where you're trying to balance all these things at once, it can be hard to, you know, actually create a system where you're putting time for work and everything else that you need to get done. For you, what techniques do you use to manage your time? I, I do a mixture of a lot of things. I've found through the years, you know, it depends a little bit on where you are right now, what you're doing. But something that always works for me is time blocking and working with timers. I, um, I use my calendar to really devote time blocks to specific tasks. What I've also found is that when I accumulate 
very similar tasks and do them in one go that is more efficient for me and that works very well with the time blocking as well uh, and then when I have to do really concentrational work like writing something that can be very monotonous I have a timer app running on my tablet and that helps to keep me motivated and visualize my progress and that works very well for me uh, also to structure my days I, I have a very strict routine well not very strict, but it's it's more or less the same activities every morning and every night in order to get into that work mode and get out of it in the same way. Mm, what what is your if you would like to share what does your mm. like morning routine look like to get into work? I assume so for your deep work for me personally, I like to schedule it in the morning. I feel like mm -hmm. in the morning I'm most productive before lunch, so that's like, you know, I'll work on one or two tasks for a few hours where I'm really dedicated and totally distraction free and then. After lunch, I have sort of like all my other smaller tasks and mm. other little to do's that I don't need to, you know, have full focus on. What does that look like for you? Like walk us through your day, your perfect, yeah. productive day. Now, first of all, I envy you. I would like to be a morning person or someone who's very productive in the morning. I'm very much a night owl. So I, I really take my time in the morning. I, I get up. I always do some some form of stretching like yoga to, you know, get the stiff out of my body drink a lot of tea, then I cycle to university, which is also very good. You're in the fresh air, you're activating mm -hmm. your body. And then I sit down and first do my email, some administrational little tasks. What do you do in the afternoon? I like to do it in the morning, so to get it out of my head. Uh, and then most of the time it's already after lunch, I would really sit down and do two hour sessions for reading and writing. And sometimes I have uh, lectures or research meetings when I'm not really getting things done in the afternoon that I will all, always add a reading session most of the time in the evening that works very well because for reading you don't have to be that much concentrated as for writing some people might disagree with me but for me reading is um, much more scanning the text and getting the information out that you really need and I can do that as well in the evening and from what I've seen on your Instagram you do a lot of reading I feel like you always have like a stack of books this tall that you have to get through I'm like oh there they are <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's a typical humanities disease I'm afraid you always have too many books <laughs> so you have it reverse which is super interesting um and you so the timer do you, it's it's like a pomodoro except you've sort of yeah. elongated the sessions yeah exactly I think a default pomodoro would be 25 minutes right 25 minutes that's right 25 minutes yeah that was too short for me actually me too I, mm -hmm. you too and oh, that's interesting yeah. because I I, I thought I felt that after 25 minutes, I just entered the flow state. Then I had to go out of it right away. And that was, it really felt like a shame sometimes because then, then again, I would distract myself and it would take me so long to get back into the flow state that I, I'm really working with one hour timers now. And most of the time I do two of these sessions. So I work in two hour blocks and that works very well. Then I do a short break and uh, maybe we'll do a, a different activity, but two hours is a very good time for me. Yeah. And if you're fully focused, that's a lot of time to actually get a lot of work done. Yeah. I found I the same thing with the 25 minutes because scientifically it takes 15 minutes to enter a flow state for most people. Okay. So like you have to really dedicate yourself to like dropping into it and then mm -hmm. it sort of starts and you get that sort of, you know, flow feeling where your time doesn't really exist and you're just kind of creating and thinking and fully focused on your task at hand. Um, but yeah, some people, some people say mm -hmm. that they love doing 25 minute deep work sessions so I assume they just sort of like open their computer and they're like okay let's go and they just start for mm -hmm. 25 minutes I never experienced that but it's interesting that you're the same way that way yeah I, I couldn't do it it's interesting I didn't know it takes you 15 minutes was it to to get yeah. into the flow state but um knowing myself I would say it's it's definitely true for me so I I need to have larger sessions yeah absolutely I agree so those are your time management techniques. <clears throat> You've said in your in your interview that you work in Google Workspace mostly. What tools do you use? Like apps, uh, mm -hmm. you use Google Calendar. What kind of tools are you using day to day to keep yourself focused, manage your time, keep your calendar organized and make sure that you're having time for all the other things that you want to do too? Mm -hmm. It's a lot and it's become a lot through the years for, for different purposes. <laughs> um, as you said, my the, the core of my, my structure system um, on the internet is, is the Google ecosystem. I use calendar to time block to really set my schedule. Then I also use tasks. I recently added tasks because it works very well with Reclaim, but I guess we will, we will get there. Um, where I have a list of my long-term tasks. 
Mm -hmm. And then I also have Google Keep for short, short, short notes and reminders, which I heavily depend on because you get very forgetful when you have a lot to do, as I found. That's true. Um, but these are really for, for long-term tasks and short notes for, for longer notes and more complex things. I, I use Notion, um, but not as an app. I really use the web version. I like the web version better. The, the app doesn't work that well in Android, as I found. Um, for example, on Notion, I will keep a list of, uh, as you can see, all the books that I order. You really have to know why you're ordering them at some point. Uh, that's what, what I would do on Notion. And on a weekly and also daily basis, I will actually use paper uh, for lists of my to-dos. That's where all my tasks are, not in the right order, but all the tasks that I have to do on, on the specific day. And then I like to cross them off at the end of the day so I can see what I've really done. That works very well for me. And it feels nice. There's there's something really nice about just very like much. checking yeah. it off or crossing it out and being like, that's done. Yeah. I'm I'm guilty of, uh, you know, sometimes you like, at the end of the day, it doesn't look like it's long enough. So you like think of things that you did and you write it down and you cross it off, you know? <laughs> I've done the same. I've done the same. <laughs> like, but, you know, at least you have the satisfaction and lets you sleep better. And then I think it's worth it. You, you also have to know these little treats to keep you going. <laughs> exactly. Celebrating the small wins. Yeah. Um, you recently started using a reclaim. You shared it with your followers. Yeah. That's how I found you on Instagram, which was super exciting. Um, how have you incorporated a reclaim into your schedule? And how does that sort of played in with your other tools and helped you improve your productivity? Well, I started using Reclaim because I saw that you can define habits on there for which Reclaim then finds time for you to do, which sounded so fascinating for me. And what I actually use it for, and I think that's a bit of a misuse, but it works very well, is that I defined habits for my reading time and for my writing time, which are at this point really more habits than they are tasks because it's hard to say how, how much mm -hmm. time I will take to get this specific thing done. Sometimes it takes more, sometimes it takes less. And I have to do it on a daily basis. So I really like that Reclaim is just squeezing it in wherever there's a slot in my calendar free. Um, and I really get to sit down every day and find some time to work on these very important things. But I also, at this point, manage all my tasks on Reclaim, um, which also helps to, you know, keep it in a, as much of a short period of time as possible. Because, I mean, I'm sure we have experienced it all. Once you say, okay, I'm just going to sit down and do something, it could take forever. Whereas when you say, I'm going to do this for two hours, you're all of a sudden you're done after two hours. And that's where I feel Reclaim really helps me to organize all the tasks that I have. And I don't have to make the choice when to do them as well, which is a big relief. I really like to overthink things. So when someone else makes the decision for me, it's easier to just sit down and do it. Yeah, absolutely. The decision paralysis, like taking mm -hmm. that out of the way. And that was a huge game changer for time blocking for me as well, mm -hmm. where it's just like, oh, I don't have to sit down and be like, okay, where am I going to start? Because I already have my day and my week planned by priority and everything's mm -hmm. fit in where I have time, where I have real time, not like, mm -hmm. oh, I'll do it later, you know, and then you have a million things to do later and you never yeah. get anything done. Like it was in school, right? I mean, in school, we had this schedule exactly. set for us and that's why. That's a really good point. I've never it considered is. it like and, that. Uh, I mean, I also think it depends on the type that you are. Some people will feel too, you know, imprisoned by a set schedule. But when you don't really care, you just want to be productive. It can be real freedom not to have, have to make the choice for yourself. Yeah, that's true. It's crazy to me, too, because it's been reported and studied that t actually time blocking your schedule improves productivity by up to 80% just really? by... Wow. allowing you to focus on one task at a time so mm -hmm. instead of like having you know a million things on your mind and kind of doing a little bit here and a little bit there sitting mm -hmm. down and being like i'm going to just do this for whatever half an hour two hours um actually improves your productivity in incredibly well so it's mm -hmm. it's very interesting that that you that school concept sort of applies there too because i've never i've never considered it like that yeah it just came to me as i said it that's so fascinating 80 percent, but it makes so much so much sense from from Absolutely. my experience yeah, same. Absolutely. Um, for students, obviously, you know, especially as you get into uh, higher graduate degrees, you're spending a lot of time on your schoolwork. It's a huge part of your life and your absolute sort of focus right now and your priority. How do you manage work-life balance? How do you, do you sort of have a clear stop at the end of the day where you're like, I'm not going to work anymore? How mm -hmm. do you sort of work into your weekends? Do you build, you obviously make time for exercise. How do you build all of that into, into your weekly schedule? That's a, also a very good question. I 
for me, it comes down to having a very good routine. Um, as I already admitted, I am more of a night owl. So my, my time to end in the day will now sound very shocking for you. But um, most of the time, it's around 11 p.m. After the, I did another <laughs> reading session, really. And then I have like one, one hour, one and a half hour to watch something lighthearted on Netflix or play some video games in order to, to get the head away from, from my work session. And then I'm also very strict on my sleep. I unfortunately need a lot of sleep. Um, around eight hours and I I'm very careful that I really get these eight hours in every day because that's when I can really work focused and not be tired all the time and I don't experience energy lows so that's helping me a lot to really be productive throughout the day and then after I sleep these these eight hours as I said I start with my morning routine go to university and then just follow my my schedule and my to-do list that I have set the night before or even earlier Oh, yeah, eight hours. And that's that's a big thing that people often forget. It's yeah. always like the top tip in every in every tip and recommendations list is always like make sure you get enough sleep. And people are like, yeah, oh, yeah I'll do yeah. all the other stuff maybe, but like not that. I can sleep when I'm dead, but that's so stupid. That's I mean because some you, people... you perform better when yeah. you're rested. Yeah. And in I everything. Envy people who can perform on four hours of sleep very well. I can't. I'm I'm really no. dead when I don't sleep enough. So I have to do it, but it works. So I feel like we've already covered a bunch of tips, but for other students, whether they're looking to pursue a PhD or are just in school now, going into school, trying to find sort of tips and tricks and advice on, on what to prioritize, what advice would you give students coming in after you as a student who's who's been a student for a while and has really perfected her routine? Oh, perfected is a strong word. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> if I had to say one advice, I would say to not underestimate the power of a good network. And with that, I mean um, that you always should try to find a group of other students, PhD students, whatever point of your academic career you're in at this moment, with whom you can share tips, experiences, and from whom you also can learn and from whose mistakes you can also learn. And if you don't have the possibility to do that on your campus or in your school, which is unfortunately for, for many, it is the case, especially when you go to another country, for example, um, go online, go to Instagram or other um, platforms, Discord. There are a lot of great study grants there where you can connect and share your, your journey. And that's really helped me a lot, I have to say. Thank you so much for talking to me. Is there anything else that you would like to share with the community? I'll have all of your information linked down below if you guys want to go follow Lisa um, for productivity tips and time manager tips for students. And she posts every day and is very active on Instagram, which is amazing. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with the community before we log off? Look after your sleep. Um, <laughs> also take, take time off. Don't underestimate the, that you need time off in order to recharge your brain. And um, I'd be happy to see you on Instagram and happy to, to exchange your experiences on Reclaim, for example, not an ad, but um, I'm very passionate about your, your platform. So I love thanks that. for having me. It was a pleasure. I'm very excited. Thank you for sharing all your tips and for finding Reclaim helpful. It's always interesting to see um, students, especially we do have a student discount and I feel like moving into this new phase, it's really I think it's maybe be great for students to see how Reclaim can help you because it's often mm -hmm. sort of used by professionals and, and very busy professionals, but students are extremely busy too. And yeah. that sort of balancing tasks, routines, habits, that's what Reclaim is there for. Thank you so much for talking with me. Um, Thanks and so we will much. see you on Instagram. I'll have everything linked down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you liked it, subscribe to our channel for more productivity tips, calendar hacks, and product updates. And we will see you in the next video.